Praise the Lord. Welcome. Wow. Glad you're with us in this holiday, Christmas holiday season. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the reason why we celebrate this beautiful season we call Christmas. Amen. Love you. Love all of you. Thank God for a great day Sunday. I'm enjoy that word, the anointing, the liberty, the freedom, the power, uh, the, the, the presence of God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in scripture today in Revelations. Tonight we're going to be talking about Christ having the preeminence in eternity. We're talking about for our Bible study tonight. So the K, I was telling the folks on Sunday, I said, I said, you know, with man, God always has the upper hand. You can kick and fume and carry on and, and cuss him out, fuss him out, do everything you want to do with him, but God holds all the cards. Amen. He has eternity on you. Your years will come to an end. Your day will come to an end. You will draw your last breath, and God will still be God <laughs> from generation to generation. And you will stand before him and give account for your life. Pastor, do you remember when you were in school and when you learned the multiplication table? Right. And all the answers were on the last page <laughs> in the book. You're right. That's right. And that's what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. In Revelation. It's all there. It's all there. It's all there. We're going to look at Revelation 19. <clears throat> but before we do that, we're going to pray. And uh, I want you to be in prayer. Start praying for the service this coming Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, be in prayer for the service, for the prayer time on Friday. And uh, had a wonderful time last Friday in prayer. And a good turnout, but a wonderful move of God. And so I give God thanks for that. So let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful and we're grateful. We honor your presence. Let your manifest presence fill the temple. We honor your glory in the temple. Father, we ask that you tear the heavens and come down, rest down among the candlesticks, walk among your people, Father. Give us an open heaven tonight. Dispel the darkness. Lord, we pull down every principality and power and might and ruler of the darkness. Every vile, seducing, dark spirit. We bind the strong man. We bind every evil presence. We dispel the darkness. And we pray that the light of your glory would fill our hearts and fill our minds and fill this temple with your light, your glory, your power, your spirit. Father, walk among the candlesticks. Manifest yourself unto us. Show us your glory in the miraculous, the supernatural, the miracles of God. Father, to the glory of God, we give you blessing and honor and worship and glory and power, riches and wisdom, praise and thanks to the Son of David, to the Son of God, to the King Eternal, to the Omnipotent Father. Father, Oh, I feel the presence of God. Father, I thank you for the witness of your spirit. Lord, we want you to know we recognize that you have come in the temple. You're in the house. And we bow at your feet. We worship at your throne. We lift you high upon the throne of our lives, the throne of our hearts, the throne of our minds. Be glorified in us. Be glorified in this service. Touch every heart that's here, every family that's here. Move by your mighty hand, by your Holy Spirit. Work your good work, good will, good purpose, good pleasure in our lives. Father, we look for your coming. It could be tonight. 
We look, there's nothing, nothing, nothing has to happen to cause you to come. You can come at any moment. And Lord, I believe you. And I thank you. May we be looking, watching, waiting. May we be found worthy, worthy to escape the great escape, the rapture, that we may escape all these things that shall come to pass, that we fly away and go home. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Goodbye, Satan. Goodbye, sin. Goodbye, darkness. Mark, we go home. Go home. Hallelujah. The great escapes at the Carol. The Bible said we're escaped from for, escape all those things that are coming upon the face of the earth as the tribulation. Escape all those things and stand before the Son of God. Out of the judgment seat and give account for your life's work that ye may reward you. Amen. Amen. All right. Got a great, got a great teaching that we're talking about. Christ has the preeminence in eternity. So we did with Revelations tonight. Look at Revelations 19. Let's look at God destroying this is just before the kingdom comes when God destroys the harlot. The harlot church. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. <clears throat> because he hath judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. This is a spiritual fornication. Worshiping idolatry and playing with the darkness. And he has what? Avenge on her the blood of his saints, his martyrs, shed by her. Again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke, the smoke of Rome, the harlot church, God's going to burn it with fire. Rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of a mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, what a great multitude. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife had made herself ready and to her it was granted let, let, let's let's hold it right here by, by the wife look at me for a second right now you are say say i am engaged to the lord i am betrothed to him he has given me a ring that's the seal of the spirit somebody say amen and not wonderful hallelujah now uh, we are a, we are, a, uh, when you are engaged, you are what? Uh, in a, br a bride in waiting. Say, I'm a bride in waiting. I'm in the bridal company. I'm not married yet, but I'm a bride in waiting. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then the marriage supper of the Lamb, the consummation of we're talking about, don't you think about anything but man or wife in the flesh and the physical this is all spiritual and uh, this is the confirmation between god uh god's son and uh, and his his true believers okay and uh so uh, then we become uh the bride in waiting prepares herself come on Amen. Don't you do that? Set your wedding date. Get your gown ready. Get everything. Uh, get everything. And all then it happens. Okay. 
then you become what? The wife. No more the bride, no more the bride in waiting, no more engaged. You become Mrs. So-and-so. You become his wife. Somebody say amen. And so we will, we will, we will go from this earth as betrothed to him and uh and then we will be the bride in waiting we there will be a wedding day i think i preach a message i'm going to a wedding sometime i think two years ago i need to preach that again great message and uh then we become say with me the wife of the lamb so christ comes back for his bride and then we come back his we and then the wife comes back with the bridegroom to set up the kingdom. Say the set up house. To set up the kingdom. Amen. Somebody say amen. And we shall what? Reign with him for a thousand years. Not only a thousand years, but a thousand years will go into eternity. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Somebody say praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Look at verse 9. Then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. We don't worship angels. We don't worship men. Somebody say amen. amen. See that you do not do that. For I am what? Your fellow servant. And of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. What did he say? Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Somebody say praise God. Amen. And then we have Christ coming back with his, say with me, he's coming back with his wife. Bride, the Lamb's wife. And I saw heaven open, verse 11. And behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in his right and in righteousness, he judges and make war. His eyes was a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dripped dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies of heaven clothed in fine... Now, won't you look at this? It says what? Fine linen. There are three garments God lays out in Scripture. The white robe for tribulation saints. They're not bride, they're saved. They get the white robe. The bridal garment is what? The fine linen. Embroidered on that fine linen. Embroidered work in pure gold. Okay? And it has all your life's journey in it. Nothing escapes God. And the armies of heaven clothed in what? Fine linen. White and clean followed him on white horses. With the Bible said they're white, white and clean. Some will have the minimum, the garment, say with me, the garment of salvation. Remember, there's a whole multitude cry, what? Salvation. That's all they cry, because that's all they know. You speak what you know. Okay. How do you know this? The Bible even says some will be saved. Barely, barely pulling out of the fire. We, we, and, then, and then we stop. Let's continue. Hating. Say hating. Hating. Hating their garments spotted by the flesh. They're saved. But they're not in that that company. It's like the tribulation saints. That's another company. They have the white robe. Okay. But the but the the bridal garment 
It's pure linen, bright, white, bright like the like like a light and clean. Be ye be ye clean that bear the vessel of God. Somebody say Amen. That's the washing, the washing of the soul by the blood, the washing of the spirit by the spirit, and uh, the washing of the flesh by the word. So you're thoroughly clean. Be ye clean that bear the vessel of God. God don't, God don't like dirty vessels. The vessel must be clean. That's why the bride must mirror Christ. She is without, says me, spot, wrinkle, blemish. She is flawless. She's perfect. Say she's complete. Be ye complete. She's complete. She walks in, say with me, the excellence. Say it. She walks in the excellence. She pursues the excellence. She's not mediocre. Let's look at this. 14. The armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, follow him on white horses. Now this is, look at me, these, this heavenly army, which is his wife now. Let me say, not everybody comes back with Christ who goes in the rapture. Only the overcomers, read it in Revelations, come back with him. That's one of the rewards given to the overcomers. That you'll sit with me in my throne and you will reign with me in the kingdom to come. Amen. And remember, remember the, the bridal multitude, she had a lot to say. She didn't even say salvation. She's moved on. Paul said what? Move on from the elementary stage of salvation. And come into the fullness of God that you might be filled with all of the fullness of God and of Christ. Move on from that. Move on from that. In other words, grow up. What do we grow? The Bible said, Paul said, well, we grow up into Christ. We become the little Christ. We become the Christ. Remember, the image is restored. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Verse 15, now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations that come against him and come up to Israel to destroy her. And he himself, Jesus Christ himself, will rule them with a rod of iron, the nations on the earth. And he himself does what? Treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is the last war. Mm -hmm. This is when the kings of the east, all the Asian countries, come together. Japan, Philippines, China, North Korea, South Korea, Indonesia, all the Asian, con that whole Asian continent. Remember, remember the Holy Spirit told Paul, don't take the gospel to Asia. But they're coming. They're going to all come. Satan's going to bring them all together. Like what? Right now they're fighting one another. They're going to bring them all together. These are the kings of the east. They're going to bring them down to Israel. And God will not fight them, neither will we fight them. We won't even dismount from the horse, and neither will he. Just with the spoken word, the sword. Say the sword. What did the Bible say? The sword, the word is nigh thee, even in thine heart, even in thy mouth. You don't realize how powerful the sword is. That's why the devil hates for you, number one, to learn about it, right. to memorize it, right. and he dare you to even speak it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you speak it. 
I'm going to take, because the word is what? Spirit and life. Woo. Realize what, realize what you speak. The word is spirit and the word is power and the word is life. Speak life. Amen, church. I'm going to hold it right here. But let me, let me. Uh, so he treads the wine press. This is when blood run to the horse's mouth for 28 square miles. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, what? King of kings and Lord of lords. We're going to hold it right, right there. Well, no, 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 hold it. Let's, let's finish this so we can pick up, because I want to pick up chapter 20 in the Bible study. So look at the beast, the Antichrist and his armies are defeated when Christ comes. Then I saw an angel standing up, standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that all the vultures, these are the birds that eat that eat flesh. All the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the Antichrist, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him. See, first they come up against Israel. But Jesus steps in the in the path. Amen. And Jesus is saying, I dare you to touch, I dare you to touch my people. Amen. And so they now they turn their attention to him. He said, Good. <laughs> and he cleans the floor. He opens the earth. And he rains fire and brimstone and all what he will do. Amen. Amen. So, so. The Antichrist with their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army, which is what? The wife of the Lamb. Then the beast, the Antichrist, was captured. And with him, what? The false prophet, the religious false prophet, who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast. See, Satan don't have to convince you. He just has to deceive you. And those who worship his image. Look at me for a second. He, he so, he so uh, tried to mimic Christ. You know, you're made in his image. God restores the image. The purpose of the gospel is what? That the image be restored, which is Christ before me. Satan has an image. What is the image? Satan himself, just like Christ. That's why the image will be made. This, 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 uh, this statue that will come alive will be made in the image of Satan. Because he will possess this image. And this image will come alive. And speak and move and function. But it will be what? Satan. Why Satan? Because Satan always desire the worship of God. Even today. What did you tell Jesus? Bow down and worship me. I'll give you all the kingdoms. You bow down and worship me. What did he say to, to God on the throne? I don't want to cover the throne. I will sit on the throne. That I receive the worship. Okay? He always desire worship. So why do you think all these false religions, they worship, but they worship what? Paul said, no, not God. All they worship, but who do they worship? Demon spirits, which is his kingdom, which is Satan. So behind every false religion, there's a demonic, dark spirit. That's why Paul said, you cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Okay? And, and, and it comes, comes in many forms. Okay? Many, many are, are deceived. And uh, 
uh, they, they worship a demon god. They don't worship Christ. And so, so they want to hold on to masonry, worshiping demons, still want to be in church. You understand what I'm saying to you? And they take communion. Now, Paul addressed that. He said, you can't do that. You can't do that. God will kill you. And I've, I've witnessed. I've witnessed that. You, you, you don't play around with that. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you'll drop dead. All of a sudden, cancer take a hold of you. All the, I, I'm telling you, I've witnessed that here. You don't, you don't play with that. God said, you can't do it. God said, but if you do it, he said, you, eh, because of this, many of you are sickly and many of you die prematurely before your time because you partook of the table of the Lord, mingled it with the table of the dark demonic spirits. And, and God, God that's, that's, that's a red line you don't cross with God. Let's wrap this up. Anybody join this? Yes. This is a Bible study. Amen. All right? Look at verse 20. Then the beasts were captured, the Antichrist, with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worship his image, which is the statue. These two, the false prophet and the Antichrist, were what? Cast alive into the lake of fire. Now what's the lake of fire? Look at me for a second. You have hell. If you die lost without God, you know where you go? You go to hell. What is hell? Hell is a prison and a waiting place, but it's a prison for the disembodied spirits of the wicked, lost, dead. Waiting, say waiting for judgment. What is judgment? The white throne, we're going to talk about that in the study. It's the white throne judgment. Where you cast, where you given a spirit body. Say I'm given, a, even the wicked, hear me, given a spirit body. Just like you have a spirit body. Okay? That they'll stand before God in a spirit body. And they will be cast alive into the lake of fire from hell into the lake of where Satan the Antichrist the false prophet and all the angels and all those who who rebel against God forever and they will perish and they will be in torment because they have what a spirit body forever and forever without time into eternity Without God, without hope. That's the second death. Let's look at it before we wrap it up. These two Antichrist false prophet, Kenny, I'm in, uh, uh, Kenny, I'm in the chapter 19, verse, Revelations 19, verse 21. Well, well, well 20, let's back at 20. Then the beasts were captured, the Antichrist, and in the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worship his image. These two were cast alive into what? The lake. They didn't even go to hell. God took them right from the earth. Bam! Into the lake of fire. Burning with what? Brimstone. And the rest were killed. This great multitude of people, over 200 million souls, were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him, Christ, who sat on the horse. Look, he's still on the horse. Just the spoken word, Kenny. Destroy this 200 million man army and all the birds were filled with their flesh. So God's going to call the buzzards 
in closing, let me say something to you. A few years ago, I was reading an article from the Middle East and was talking about this Egyptian airline almost crashed because uh, they came into a cloud, a dark cloud, and they thought it was a rain cloud. And as they drew closer, they found out it was a cloud of buzzards. And so they were so close, he had to drop that plane. And many got hurt in their neck. Those who didn't have their seat belts, uh, many got uh, damage in their bodies. And uh, the plane almost, almost lost the plane, almost crashed. Uh, had, he, had he continued to go and not drop that plane, uh, he couldn't go higher because the cloud was, the, bir the birds was higher, you see. So he had to go below. So he had to drop down in the altitude below this cloud, but it was buzzards. Mm. And, and right now, today, they are, the Middle East are at a maze and at a wonder, and they don't understand why the buzzards are multiplying at such pace. Mm. These are, you never seen buzzards in the middle. Mark it big as you. No kidding. You, you might think I'm serious. I mean, they the most looking, they look like a demon out of hell. Disgusting, huge. I mean, they look like, oh, you don't want to meet that thing in the night. Like, oh, I mean, really? I mean, and, and they eat the dead. They, these are vultures. But, I, you know, I never seen vultures that big. These things are like monsters. Like what? Like bigger than me, bigger than you, Kenny. Oh, big, 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 big as Mark. Mm. Big, but but they 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 don't understand why they're multiplying the way they are multiplying, and they're trying to find out, you know, do a study on them where they roost. And but the Middle East is so big, you see. God has a point. God has a place where He hides them, where they, where you know, in the. Middle East got a lot of desert, you know, a lot of caves, a lot of mountains. You take forever trying to find the buzzards, you know. So God is preserving them, and God is feeding them. I don't know what he feed them, but their fat is all get out. They're eating something, and and but they're, they're multiplying. They are literally multiplying. Wow. So I thought I'd share that with you. Amen. Amen. Father, let this word speak to us. Let this word minister to us. Lord, open our spirit tonight for the teaching of your word. Manifest yourself unto us. Show us your glory. Lord, just, just come down and rest down on us. And give us a good time today with you in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about Christ. Christ has the preeminence in eternity. I want to give you some scriptures. Philippians, scriptures on the condition in eternity after, say, after the redemption. Wherefore God also in Philippians chapter 2, 9 and 11. Wherefore God highly exalted him, Jesus Christ, and gave unto him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. Let's call it the underworld. The dark world. The demonic world. And that every tongue should confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. His Lordship will be in full display. In eternity. He will be recognized. By everyone in the earth, in heaven, in the earth, and those even in hell, even in the lake of fire. Revelation 4.11, worthy art thou, O Lord our God, 
to receive the glory, the honor, and the power. For thou didst create all things. Jesus is the creator. And because of thy will, they were and were created. Revelation 5, 12, verse 14. Worthy is the land that hath been slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might, honor and glory and blessing and every creature and every created thing which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things that are in them heard I saying unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb. So you have Elohim God the Father and you have Jesus the Lamb. Be what? Blessing. Say with me. Blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion forever and forever. And the four living creatures said amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. John, 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now are we the children of God. And it is not yet made manifest or reveal what we shall be. But we know that if he shall be revealed, manifested, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is as he truly is in eternity and nobody has ever seen him yet hello nobody has ever seen the glorified Christ but now we will what see him as he really is now Peter James and John you know they would take up in the mountain and they saw the transfiguration but all they got is just a little bird's eye view of the glory of Christ where his garments became white like light and the presence, the glory of God fill the atmosphere on the mountain. And there appeared Moses, real Moses, Elijah, real Elijah, and Jesus. Representing, I call it the three-legged stool. Law, prophet, grace. God has dealt with man in three different ways. See, that's the, that's the three-dimensional of God in everything he does. Law, first he came with law. They couldn't live by the law. Then he sent prophets. They killed the prophets, but he sent prophets. Now he sent his own son. They killed him. That was prophesied that they would do that. Let's kill him. So they kill him. Law, prophet, grace. Now when I say they kill him, no one killed him. But you know what I'm talking about. God used men to bring about his purpose and his will. But he died willingly. No one killed Jesus. So let me correct that. Another scripture I want to give you is 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1, 3, 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy begat us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead unto an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. What is he talking about? He says he's talking about my new house. He says, I got a new house. Incorruptible, this is corruptible. Undefiled, this is defiled by sin. Come on, talk to me here. I'm trying to show you the word here. So it's incorruptible. We shall what? This corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So we will what? Inherit incorruptibility. And we, it will be what? Under fire. That what? Fadeth. Look at me. I remember when I was handsome and good looking. 
I am fading away. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm losing all my black hair. It's getting thin. My beauty is fading. <laughs> my, the, the, the earthly human glory is fading. So is you. Let's look in the mirror. <laughs> I'm not 20. I'm not 24. I'm 72. But for 72 year old, not look too bad. Because I take care. God helps me take care of the house. Say the temple. Only the temple. And remember, one of the crowns is given to those who take care of the house. So you don't put any holes in it that God already put holes in. You don't want to mark it. You don't want to pollute it. You don't want to fornicate in it. You don't want to dope in it and drug in it and all kinds of dark things to open up a dark door for demonic presence. You know, you want to keep it, say, holy, clean, sanctified. Come on, godly, righteous. Come on, amen. Be ye clean that bear the vessel. Say, this is the vessel of God. Come on. So God said, what? Keep it clean. He who defiled the temple, him shall God destroy. You can't get any plainer than that. So don't defile it. Don't, 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 don't corrupt it. Don't do evil in it. You want the presence of God? You got to keep it clean. Say sanctified. Set her apart. Just like this church. Set it apart. Come on, say set it apart. Amen. Church is over 30 years old. Say it's been set apart. Consecrated. Amen. Nothing, nothing comes here but what? But that which is holy. Amen. Now you can say this is holy ground. Because it's been what? Consecrated. Set apart. Separated. For what? For worship. For the king. For the glory. Amen. This is what? Our Father's house. This is His house. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? All right. The Bible said this, this, this inheritance, this new house is what? Reserved. And you need to remind yourself about this. It's reserved in heaven for you. It's got your name on it. Sorry. I got a new house. I can't wait to see what it looked like. I'm trying. The beauty of the new house. The glory of the house. God said the latter is far greater than the, than the, than the former. Because now what? The new house is going to be clothed with glory and power. Wow. No more fading away. No more aging. No more, no more falling out of your hair. No more wrinkled face. No more arthritis fingers. No more, no more disease, pain, affliction. No more slow. Ain't it wonderful? My God. I mean, forever, eternity. You're never getting tired. You know, you no more, no more pain. Wow. No more death. No more sorrow. Think about that. None of that. But joy. Joy. You don't know joy. Joy. We just get to as a tiny little sample of joy. I'm talking about the full joy. Oh, Lord. Remember everything on this earth is only a shadow, a foretaste of the full meal deal in eternity. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we don't get it all. But we get enough to hold you. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Part of, uh, uh, the Bible calls it the, a deposit of earnest money. Uh, the, the, a deposit. You just get a, a foretaste of it. Give me another scripture. Revelation 22, 1-5. And he showed me a river of water of life. Bright as crystal. Clear. Bright as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. 
and in the midst of the street thereof, and on either side of the river, and on that was the tree of life. This tree of life bear twelve manner of fruit. To bear twelve different kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. So it's got twelve seasons, one a month, and it brings forth a different fruit every month. Glory to God. You want apple this month? We get apple. Well, you want grape now? Whatever. Twelve different fruit. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then line the, the, the streets of gold on either side. Just, just fruit trees bearing a different fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree is for the healing of the nation. Why does the nations need healing? Because they're not, say with me, complete and perfected. We're talking about, say, spiritual healing. Because they don't have physical bodies. For flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So here what the word says, I'm just taking what the word said. The word said, it's for the healing. Healing is healing. And it says, say, it's for the nations. It didn't say the church. It didn't say the bride. It says what? The nations. And look what the Bible said. And the nations of those who are saved, these are those who accept the basic premise of the salvation of Christ. Through God's mercy, God gave him, save me, the faith, the grace, and the gift. What is the gift? The gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. See you can receive the gift. In simple faith. Because you don't merit it. You don't earn it. But you refuse to get to know the one who gave you the gift. So these nations are on earth. These nations, yes, I'm talking about eternity now. I'm not talking about millennial kingdom. I'm talking about into eternity. Remember the, remember the new earth comes what? The jewel box sits in the middle of it. Christ is the light. God is the light. Light, Christ is the lamp that shines through the jewel box and is the light of the glory of Christ that radiates, radiates from within the jewel box, the new Jerusalem, throughout the new earth. And so you have nations that live on the new earth that are saved. So all the Bible tells you that are safe shall walk in the light of the glory of Christ from the jewel box. This, this is going to be like the sun. The Christ will be here. The Father will be here. We're yet to understand the full dynamic of this because don't think that God like me and you. God said, don't compare me like me and you. Okay. So God is omniscient. Uh, we, we don't know how it's all going to get together. But we know the Father is here with Christ. Christ is the lamp. God is the light. And Christ is the lamp. That's according to Revelation. And so the light of the new earth is this. Because you have no sun, no moon. No stars, but what? The glory of God. That's why, that's why you can't comprehend what Christ will be like. Because if, he, if he's going to be brighter than the sun to illuminate the new earth through the jewel box, and guess what? I'm in the box. <laughs> Woo! Let that sink in. talking about the nations of those that are saved that will be on the new earth 
they will walk in the light of this and they will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. A type and shadow of this is manifesting the kingdom. The Bible said the nations will come up to Jerusalem and will bring the glory and honor of the nations into the temple that God's going to build, 28 square miles, and where he will set his throne, okay, with cascade with a river of life flowing down, okay, and, and, uh, So those that are saved, we, we can see a type and shadow of that on this earth. That is perfection in eternity. This is what? Kingdom. And God said, those who don't own come up once a year, I will send drought. Read it. I'll hold back the rain. Read it. Okay? So all of the nations will be required to go up to Jerusalem. To worship once a year. Hallelujah. Let's look at let's let me let, let me, let's 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 look at this. So we have we're reading Revelation twenty two. Anybody join us? We're reading Revelation twenty two one five. And he showed me a pure river of water of light, bright as clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street and on, on this side of the river, on that which is what? The tree of life, bear twelve manner of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for what? The healing of the nation. It's not pastor saying that. It's what the word is saying. And there shall be no more curse any more. And the throne of God and of the Lamb, look at that, shall be in it. So you got what? The throne of Elohim, Father God, and of the Lamb. Shall be what? Therein. Now remember, this was created before the universe. So this is all. And his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. We will see the face of God, our Father. Remember when God said, no man ever look upon me and live. Say, so we'll see the face of Elohim, and we'll see the face of Christ. And his name shall be on their, say with me, their foreheads. See how the imitate, how, how Satan eh, imitates everything that God does? What is Satan going to put on your forehead? The mark of the beast, which is his name. He's going to own you. So you bow to him and give your allegiance to him. And you swear your life to him. And you do. Turn to, uh, turn to somebody and say, God, God bought me. He purchased me. I'm his redeemed. He sealed me with his spirit. And when I get to heaven, he's going to put a name, his own name on me. And then he's going to give me a new name. And you will like your new name. Because it's going to fit you. Perfect. In your new house. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. If you don't like your present name, don't worry about it. It's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. And the white robe angels tell the story. A sinner has come home.
for there's a new name written down in glory on this mind. Oh, yes, it's mine. And I'm sent forever. And I'm about, uh, I'm going to look at that again. Uh, I'm on my way to heaven forever. Forever, never more to roam. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. I like the old songs. Amen. Do you? Amen. And there shall be no night there, and they need no light of lamp. Neither light of the sun, nor lamp, nor light, for the Lord God gave them light. What did Jesus say? I am light, and in me there is no darkness at all. And they shall reign for what? Forever and forever and forever. Hallelujah. Now let me share something with you. Let me, let me sh sh sum up all these scriptures. After Christ had died and been raised from the dead, God highly exalted him, gave unto him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul said, for God hath made him both Lord and Christ. Acts 2.36 And hath put all things in subjection under his feet. Ephesians 1.20.22 Revelation 4 and 5 shows us the glorious and blessed state of the Lord after his resurrection and ascension. In chapter 4, it is recorded that all the created things praise God for his creation. Chapter 5 records that they praise God for his redemption. God shall put all enemies under the feet of Christ, Matthew 22, 44. In this particular task, the church bears great responsibility today because God is waiting for the church to fulfill this mission. The whole creation was subject to vanity, Romans 8:20. After the rebellion of Satan and the fall of humanity, vanity means failure of the result design, losing the original purpose, having no more direction. That's vanity. Today all things are subject to vanity, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Heaven is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Somebody say amen. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. In other words, heaven is waiting for the sons of God to come, say with me, to come into their spiritual own. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? As a manifest sons of God. Now, during this waiting period, all things are under the bondage of corruption, such as the diminishing of sunlight, the dying of wood, grass, creation, dies, and has to be what? Renew, reborn. All in this earthly realm dies. That was not supposed to happen. When you get to heaven, nothing dies. Nothing reproduces itself. Everything is created, not on this earth. Everything dies. That's why it needs to be what? Reproduce. And so God made the mechanism and the creation where, where every living thing has to what? Recreate. So he created, say with me, the seed. Every living thing has a seed. The tree has a seed. You have a seed. Woman have a seed called the ovum. Man have a seed called the spermatosa. Talk to me here. That's human seed. Animals have seed. The fish have seed. They call it a rope. 
You ever, ever ate fish roe? That's the fish seed. And they have them by the millions. Hundreds of thousands. Salmon go up, go upstream to, 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 to capriculate and to, and to, and to spawn and to, and to, and to, and to, and to uh, fertilize seed. A new generation of salmon. Everything reproduced. Everything in the ocean reproduced. All the, all the feathered flesh. The birds reproduce. All humanity. Generation after generation after. That's why God is what? Eternal. <laughs> you can't get away from him. <laughs> you can't hide and you can't run. He's eternal. He was there for you. He created you. And he was there all through the journey of your life. And he'll be there when you have to stand before him and give account. He is called the Ancient of Days. <laughs> so guess who has the last say? That's why the Bible said it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. <laughs> That's why he said, uh, uh, children, do not forget God in the days of your youth. Learn to know him and love him and serve him and get to know him. That's your creator. Without God, you wouldn't be here. Think of that. Wow. He created you. He with purpose and a plan. And he will move heaven and earth. He will do all he can in his power, by his grace, to fulfill that. But he can't do it without you. Because everything God does is love. And you have to love him. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. God will show love to you by first saving you. While you were yet in your sins, Christ died for you. And he will put his hand on you and call you. And then he's waiting for your love. The Mahanam dance. All love. All love. Isn't, isn't that the same in relationship? Come on. Isn't that love? Hallelujah. That Mahanam dance. All through life. Mahanam dance. Let's continue. Today all things are subject to vanity. However, the creation has an earnest expectation to be delivered one day from the bondage of corruption. All of creation yearns, longs to be delivered from the bondage of, 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 of corruption. All creation, the universe, the planets, the stars, all create, even, even that, all that God's created in this realm, in the created realm. They're waiting. You think you're groaning? I'm waiting for my new house. And the longer, the older you get, and the more the body fails, the longer you, uh, 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 the more you long for the new house. Come on. The windows don't open up to, no, no more. The airs don't hear as good. Got to get hearing aid. Got to get glasses. Got to get wigs. Because everything falling out. <laughs> everything going south. <laughs> and, then, and then God says, hear what he says. The latter years of your life are the worst days of your life. Hear me? I believe that is so for the unbeliever. I believe, the, I believe even with the believer, God carries you through those years. I believe that. I look at my mother-in-law. She's 94. And I say, God, yep, God, you can, huh? Still so trucking along. Still loving Jesus. Still has a witness. Still pray. Still praising God. Looking for him. She said, I can't go with you I can't go until he called me. She said, He's got to call me. He said, but she said, I'm waiting for the call. But until he calls me, I'm gonna be looking. 
And I'm going to be watching. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. She falls in the category, the category of those who are, learn this from Scripture, who are remaining. Bible. You have those who, who live 70, some way below that, but the, the, the mark is 70. And if by reason you take in a house of your strength, they'd be 80, which is four score. Okay. Anything after that is say, learn it. God said, they're remaining. The time is finished, but they are remaining. God has still has purpose in their life. Now, what they need to do, instead of squandering that time, is say, God, why am I still here? Tell me my purpose while I'm still here. Tell me why am I still here? Why have I why haven't you called me home yet? What do you want? Why am I still here? Why am I still waiting? Why am I still remaining? Remember Simeon? He was in that one who was remaining. And God, and, and God said, you're not going to see death until you what? See that which you're waiting for come to pass, which was the Lord Christ. Okay? So he has purpose. And so don't just squander that and waste that. Because God said what? You shall bring forth fruit even in your old age. Somebody say amen. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. Now God has purpose why he allows them to remain, to continue to bring forth fruit. And some go at 70 and some go at 80 and some go away through the years before that. You know, so God... You know, if that's the plan of God for you, to like the plan for Simeon. We don't understand it all. But don't squander it and don't waste it. Amen. Say, be about the Father's business. Father's business. Take good, uh, take good, you make, make good. I like what the, the Bible says, redeem the time. Make every day count. Make every, my, my saying is, make every day count. Somebody said, don't waste it. Don't let a day be lost. Make it count. Because guess what? That's your day. That's going toward your future. Think of that. Not just a day. It's your future. Wow. You're going to see it again. You're going to be rewarded for the day. So don't squander it. And don't waste it. Somebody say amen. And take advantage of every opportunity to bless God. To praise God, to worship God, to serve Him, and to be a blessing. Somebody give God praise amen. and say amen. Hallelujah. Wow, time is going and I'm still in this. Ain't it wonderful how time flies when you're having fun? Yeah. Let me finish this. I'm, gonna I'm not through, but I'm going to hold it here. Just getting wound up in this. Anybody enjoying this? Mm -hmm. Let's look at the creation close with this. For this reason, the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. When the children of God entered into the liberty of glory. Say, that's going to come. All things shall be what? Liberated. The day our bodies is redeemed, all things will be set free. Nevertheless, even now, we can foretaste the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 6, 5. The church foretaste the powers of the age to come and the kingdom age foretaste the power of eternity. Oh, hallelujah. Let me say that again. You need to learn this. When the children of God enter into the liberty of the glory of God, all things shall be liberated. The day our bodies is redeemed, all things will be set free. Nevertheless, even now, we can foretaste the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 6, 5. Hear this. The church foretastes the power of the age to come. And the kingdom age foretastes the powers of eternity. So only in kingdom. That's why God wants to bring you, say with me, from church 
in the kingdom, into priesthood. Say, church, kingdom, priesthood. Now you are what? A kingdom of priests. You are a royal priesthood. The pinnacle is to what? Minister to Christ. Everything is in him. Somebody say praise God. He's the preeminence of all things. Hallelujah. So the priest what? Minister spiritual scripture. Spiritual sacrifices to Christ. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. Which is your reasonable worship. Your reasonable service to God. In the future, our bodies will be redeemed and we will receive sonship and enter into the liberty of the glory of God. Wow, we can't comprehend that. Now hear what the Bible said. Listen to this. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now we experience that here. But I'm talking about the liberty of the glory of God. Now you're going to enter in a different realm. Not the spirit, but now the glory. Say, the glory, the glory. of God. That's a whole other world. I don't even know what all, all that, I, I, you know, you know. I'll come into that, but I'll like what? Eyes haven't seen, ears have never heard, neither had it even entered into the hearts of men the things that God have prepared for them that love him. And you can find that in Romans 8, 19, 23. Let me close with this one scripture. When the Lord appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First John 3, 2. We will be sons with God's life. Now you have what? Life is what? In the flesh. But you'll have, you'll be sons, say with me, with his life. I am the resurrection and the life. You will have his life. We can't comprehend that. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth, believe in me, shall never die. Believe without this, and you shall see the total salvation, the fullness of the salvation of God, having his life, coming into the full liberty of the glory of God. Wow. Being filled with all the fullness of God. All wisdom and knowledge and power and love and and oh my blessed God. Hallelujah. The Bible said we will be sons with God's life and nature. Nature. But we will also be heirs having God's inheritance and his glory. Wow. Think about all these. Let, let me go back over that. Think about it. If you're writing, you need to write that all oh, we're going to come into. As sons of God, we will have his life, the life of God. We will have his nature. We will also be heirs. Heirs of God, but also joint heirs with Christ. We will come into the inheritance of glory. We'll come into the full liberty of the glory of God. That's yet to be in full. Yet, yet to understand that. In this life we understand, said me, the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I want to tell you, I feel the spirit of the Lord, the presence of the spirit of God is upon me. And I feel nothing but liberty, freedom. I mean, I'm just flowing, baby. Hallelujah. Freedom, power, and love. My, somebody say praise. You know what? I'm so comfortable, you know. Amen. Just sharing and talking and flowing in God. That's liberty from the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about pie in the sky. I'm talking about something you can live and enjoy and be a partaker of the freedom and the liberty of the Spirit of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and I'm going to hold it right here anybody enjoy that tonight yes. hallelujah anybody learn anything tonight yes. oh, amen there's a bible study you should learn something somebody say praise the lord 
Uh, I'm not finished, but uh, I'm talking about Christ having the preeminence in eternity. Somebody say, praise God. Amen. Amen.